Hey everyone, Crow here, and this is the month in review for January 2020. So again, welcome to this month of review for January 2020. This is the fourth one of these videos I've done, and as usual, I've changed things up. Normally, I would start with uh, pinball related news, but I've decided to change that up to just news in general I felt like talking about. It won't be comprehensive or anything, just things I that have caught my eye in January that I'm going to talk about. Um, also, I'm going to talk about videos, and normally what I would have done is just talked about the videos I posted in uh, January, but I've decided to change that up as well, make that a little bit more interesting. I'm going to talk about uh, my videos, but also pick out other videos that I've watched from other uh, people and uh, I guess it could be a bit of a shout out and I kind of wanted to limit myself to five but I just couldn't do that this month so um, I think a minimum of five maybe five to ten maybe that's what I'll do in the future and then we're gonna do the Q&A so if you have questions for me uh, write them in the comments and I may or may not answer them in the uh, next video and then after that we're gonna do my pickups and then also games that I've been playing. Um, so that won't change so much. But um, yeah, as usual, I've been just changing this as I go along, trying to make it better, trying to make it more interesting. And uh, so let's get started with the news. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special report. The National Weather Service report. <laughs> Controller, what is going on in it? So the biggest thing that happened this month to me was the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and that's because companies like Arcade 1UP, Stern, Hyperkin, and Toy Shock were all there showing off stuff that personally I want, especially Arcade 1UP. And, you know, obviously I couldn't be there myself, but I'm gonna shout out three channels right now that you should go and subscribe to if you're not already, because personally I went and subscribed to these channels this month because of their con for, uh, <laughs> sorry, because of their coverage of the uh, the CES. Uh, that is Cool Toy, Retro Ralph, and P Dubs Arcade Loft. And in particular, I'm probably gonna be taking video from Cool Toy and Retro Ralph. Uh, to show in my video, just in a window to, you know, whatever. So just calling it out, go go and subscribe to their channels. Uh, but let's start out with Arcade 1UP because they showed off the most amount of stuff that I want. And uh, I'm gonna have to be saving my pennies because um, plenty of stuff that looked really cool. Let's start out with the most obvious thing that I'm kind of psyched for, and that is their new Arcade 1UP pinball machines. Um, there's a collaboration there between Zen Studios and um, Arcade 1UP, so we're gonna be seeing possibly some Zen Studios. I mean, that wouldn't be the first time I've seen um, Pinball FX3 tables in a virtual cab, but nothing kind of as affordable and, um, you know, something that actually be in a store possibly. And they showed off two different versions of their pinball machine. Uh, there'd be a Star Wars version and a Bally Williams version. They said they're gonna aim for a minimum of 10 tables. At least that's what I heard. A lot of people are saying, oh, 10 tables. But I think they're gonna try and go for more, especially I think with the Star Wars pinball because there's at least 20 Star Wars tables, I think as of right now in uh, Pinball FX3, and it would be a shame if they kind of limited it down for that arcade cab with all, all the Star Wars logos and everything. Plus, we don't even know if we're gonna get a um, Rise of Skywalker tables from Pinball FX3. So I would imagine that the Star Wars table would have to have a lot more tables. Now, the Bally Williams one, it did have an Attack from Mars theme on it, but again, that's just a prototype. They don't know if that's gonna be final or not. Um, it would be nice if Attack from Mars was on there. Um, probably will be. Um, these things look really cool. And I think the price point I heard was somewhere between like $500 and $750. Uh, so a little bit more high end than the Toy Shock ones, but it has a little bit uh, of extra features from what I heard, haptic feedback, solenoids, in, uh, in the machine, it's got the tilt functionality. 
Um, I really want to get one of these, honestly. And if I had to choose between the Bally William one and the Star Wars pinball one, honestly, you know what? It might take you by surprise, but I think I want the Star Wars one. And that's just because those tables don't exist in real life. And that's why I think it'd be cooler to have them in a virtual cab. Um, whereas with the Bally Williams table, yeah, those would be cool as well, but you'd have to compare them to the real machines too. And obviously the real machines are gonna be it all. Of course, the, uh, the arcade one-up ones are gonna be much, much less money than, um, than a real pinball machine, obviously. But I just think like, the Star Wars tables don't exist in real life, and that just kind of brings them a little bit closer, I think. Um, plus, I, I just have this feeling like the Star Wars one would have more tables in it. But again, I, I need to see more information before I make a final decision, but I'm just leaning towards the Star Wars one right now. It looks pretty cool. Um, other stuff that Arcade 1UP had at their booth that I saw, uh, they had a Golden Axe machine. Uh, I think it was called Return of Death Adder. It's the one that was never really ported to home consoles. They had a whole bunch of games in there. Um, they had showed off the Burger Time machine. Uh, this is one that won't be sold in stores. You have to pre-order this uh, or order this uh, directly off of Arcade 1UP's website. And it's a limited quantity as well. And you know what? Uh, we actually pre-ordered one. Now, <laughs> we didn't pre-order it for me. We actually pre-ordered it for my wife. Uh, even though Burger Time is my favorite arcade game, uh, my wife came out and said, you know, I want this for my birthday. Her birthday's in April. We pre-ordered it now. We should get it in March. Um, it's $400, so it's a little bit more expensive than um, like, like the $300 ones you'd see at Walmart or whatever. But it comes with the risers, got the light-up marquee. And honestly, it, it comes with like Karate Champ and Caveman Ninja and Bad Dudes on it as well. But honestly, I'm, I'm in it for burger time. <laughs> um, another thing they showed off, Pac-Man. They're going to be a, a Pac-Man 40th anniversary machine, I think. Um, it's got a really cool wood grain uh, siding and everything on it. It's going to have like 12 games on it. I think that'll also be like $400. Don't know um, where you could go buy that now. Um, there's going to be a Frogger one coming out. I don't remember. Oh, Time Pilot. Yeah, Time Pilot, Time Pilot 84 and Frogger. Those are all in one machine. NBA Jam. This was one they were actually hyping up as the biggest one at the show. And that's because it's going to have... It's going to be Wi-Fi enabled. So I think you're going to be able to play... I'm pretty sure what I heard was you're going to be able to play over Wi-Fi to other people that have the cabinet. So that's pretty cool. Um, I like NBA Jam, but I'm not bi a big enough fan to go out and get a, uh, a dedicated cabinet for it. And then um, they showed off their Star Wars. Now, Star Wars, they already obviously came out with Star Wars. But what they've done is they've created like a bench that you could pull out. So to make it more like a sit-down cabinet. And basically, it's just the same old Star Wars uh, unit, but with a slide out bench instead of a riser. So um, that was like all the arcade stuff they had, but they also, well, no, it wasn't all the arcade stuff they had. I mean, the, the regular stuff you would think of with when arcade went up, but they also show, were showing off new counter cades that would count, be a little bit smaller, come out for a cheaper price. I think they're aiming for $100, which is a really good price for those things, I think. Um, might be a little bit more, but they, I, the price wasn't final, finalized. Um, they show off these Coleco units um, that look like the old time Coleco arcade things from the 80s, um, the shell of it anyway. And then they have different games inside of it. I saw Mega Man one, a DuckTales one. Uh, those are interesting. I'm not a big fan of those units personally, but I know a lot of people are nostalgia for those kind of things. And then they showed off these, now this is what it gets me, these really tiny mini systems, like uh, a ColecoVision and a little mini Intellivision. Um, I think those are going to be quite affordable, but I I'm, I'm want to see more about the final product because they were showing it off hooked up to a tiny TV. You know, is that tiny TV part of the set or how does that all work? I don't know. It just seems really intriguing to me. And then of the last thing I remember solidly was the giant joysticks. They had a giant Pac-Man joystick and a giant Atari 2600 joystick that would connect to your TV wirelessly, I think via a dongle. And it's just, you know, a fun party thing to play. I don't really see how playing Pac-Man with a giant joystick would make it better. In fact, if anything, I think it would make it harder to play. But, uh, hey, it's stuff they're coming out with. I think that's about it for Arcade 1UP, uh, at least the stuff that I want to talk about. Uh, really briefly, I'm going to touch upon that Stern was at the CES. 
but they were just showing off the same old tables that we've already seen, the Stranger Things and the Jurassic Park I know of for sure were there. Um, let's move on, Hyperkin. Hyperkin was showing off a bunch of their new controllers, but the, I think the big thing that they were showing off there was the uh, Game Boy Player. I don't know if that was the actual name. It's like the Retron something or other. I'm calling it the Game Boy Player because you basically hook it up. You could play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance on it just by plugging in the, um, the game uh, itself into the unit. And um, pretty much it's exactly like the same thing I think that's in the Retron 5 except they taken out everything except for the Game Boy slot. All right, I am breaking into the video here during the editing because I completely forgot to mention that my arcade was there as well, but I seem to have completely forgotten about it because to me, they weren't really showing off anything any new and exciting, at least not anything that hasn't been out there already. They just showed off more of those little arcade cabs, more of those little handheld units, and they did have something that had to do with the NES and a Super Nintendo portable thing that can handle NES and Famicom or Super Nintendo and Super Famicom games. But none of that stuff really seemed new and exciting to me, so I completely forgot about it. So let's just move on with the video. And finally, Toy Shock, the ones with the, um, the virtual pinball machine with the Farsight tables in it from Pinball Arcade. They were showing off their newest revisions of these machines they're, they're going to have different um, um, labels or SKUs or whatever where it's not just haunted house they're going to have a black hole one uh, and some other ones they showed off the black hole one is the one i remember the most and because i can't remember the other ones <laughs> but they were kind of just upgrading certain things like the plunger like people were complaining the plunger was too short so they've lengthened the plunger and the bezel they've made from silver to black um, but yeah, they're trying to upgrade their product as well. So I think that was pretty interesting. And I think that's about all I'm gonna talk about for CES. Uh, moving on, uh, last week I played, I put in my entry for the Zacharia VIP tournament. Uh, what we played was the Time Machine remake. And uh, it was an interesting tournament because you could play either five ball or you could play three ball, but if you play three ball, then you get 60% added to your score. And I think that nearly everybody that uh, played the table played with the three ball version with the 60% added to the score. Now I played a game and I did pretty good at it. And I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, now Mart, here's my entry. And I just like, just went total crap. It was the shortest, like lowest game. I'd ever played and I'm I am in last place I know because I've seen the final scores I'm in last place by a lot so no well actually I'm not in last place because apparently there were two forfeits there were six people total two forfeited I don't know what reasons they forfeited and um so I'm technically not in last but I'm the last of the people that actually played and um the griff had won the tournament with an amazing score, really awesome. His his regular score was like over 300 million and that really shot his score up a lot with the 60% added. So congratulations to the Griff. Now really briefly, I wanna talk about Smash Brothers because it was unveiled that the last fighter in the first fighter pack for the game was Billith. I don't really know. It's a Fire Emblem character, Fire Emblem Three Houses apparently, and this character was added um, a lot of people don't like that this character is added because, hey, don't we have enough Fire Emblem characters that are pretty much all kind of the same, and this is just another one you're adding to the mix. And um, I guess the people that are really into Fire Emblem like that this character is in it, and the people that don't care about Fire Emblem, it's like, hey, there's like literally thousands of other characters you could have chosen that would have been more interesting. Uh, personally, I don't care. <laughs> Here's the only reason I'm bringing this up is because my personal choice for Smash Brothers is Bonk from uh, Bonk's Adventures on the TurboGrafx-16. Well, he's on other platforms as well, but you know, Bonk was pretty much well known and associated with the TurboGrafx-16 at the time. I don't, I'm pretty sure we don't have any representation from the TurboGrafx on the system. Hell, we've got Terry Bogart now, now uh, representing the Neo Geo. Let's get some Turbo Graphics representation. And in fact, for a time, the mascot wars was Mario versus Sonic 
versus Bonk. I remember seeing it on a cover of Electronic Gaming Ma Monthly one time. And I, I mean, I just think Bonk would be an awesome character in Smash. He'd be totally different. He'd be using his head. He's got the, um, you know, eating meat and powering up. Um, he's just, you could go crazy with him, especially with the stuff he was pulling off in his third game. So that's the only reason I mention Belith, Bylith in Smash Brothers. I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong, and I, personally, I don't really care. Um, but uh, I want to see Bonk in Smash. I've been wanting to see Bonk in Smash for a long time. Um, but probably will never happen. I, Bonk is pretty unknown. There's not like any new Bonk games coming out. Um, so who knows? I, I, I hope Bonk, can, nobody's requesting him is pretty much, except for me. So that's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> and the, the last thing I want to talk about for news is um, the Intellivision Amico. Now uh, I'm recording this on the 26th, as I said, but tomorrow on the 27th, they're gonna be having pre-orders for the Founders Day edition. Um, and it's gonna be like $300 from what I heard, but you're gonna get like a $50 kind of gift card, as it were, to buy additional games from the store. I am interested in the Intellivision Amico, but not $300 for our pre-order um, <laughs> interested in it. Uh, although the Founders Day Edition is the wood grain variant that I would want to have, but as far as I understand, it's still going to be available at launch. So I am still going to wait on that. But the Miko for right now is the console release for this year that I'm literally the most interested in because I don't know what to expect from it. I know what to expect with the Xbox One Series X or Xbox Series X, whatever the hell it's called. And I kind of know what to expect from the PS5, except I'm kind of on the edge of my seat waiting to hear if the PS5 is backwards compatible with all previous PlayStation generations because that's going to get me to buy the system earlier, to be honest, because um, then I could just put away the PS4 and PS3 and be able just to have one system and play all the PlayStation games I have. But the Amico itself looks really interesting. In fact, also this month they put up a trailer for the new Night Stalker game, and that looks pretty cool. I've also seen in the past a, a new version of Breakout. Um, honestly, what's gonna be interesting is if the controllers are gonna enhance the game in any, in any way, because honestly, these are the type of games you can put on any platform, it seems like. So what makes the Amigo special enough to have these games as exclusives? Is there something with the controller? Can the controller, I, I'm, this has probably already been known, and, People are probably gonna like catch me in the comments and say, oh yeah, you can use the controller this way, but can you use the controller like a paddle? I think you can. Does the, the, the thing, the little knob on their turn? I don't know. That would be great for break, Breakout. How well is the new Night Stalker gonna play with that disc? Uh, we're gonna see. And, and you know, the, the, the each controller's got its own separate screen on it. How's that gonna affect gameplay as well? Those are interesting concepts they wouldn't be able to replicate on other platforms, but how well will they happen in practice and rather than in theory? And I'm waiting to October to find out. Maybe we'll find out before then. Ah, hello. I am interrupting the video once again, and this is because it is a day later and I did get the email about the Amico Founders Edition. And I know in this video, I said I wouldn't be pre-ordering it, but you know what? I actually did pre-order it. And there's a couple of things that I saw here that made me change my mind. Um, the first is that the Founders Edition is the version that I would want, and that is the wood grain version, the golden wood grain version. I don't think I'd want any other version. But also it's because I found out that that console, they, it says in this email, would be sold for $259 to $279. And that's actually pretty close to $300 anyway. But... Here, let me just read off a list of the things that are included in this Founders Day edition. Uh, vintage wood grain Amico, hand numbered and signed by Intelligent CEO and Amico Visionary Tommy Tallarico. Honestly, I, I, I mean, I like the wood grain. I don't really care about the signature or anything. But the th other thing that sold me on it is the exclusive $50 RFID golden ticket gift card to help you load your Amico with tons of great games. I mean, you're getting $50 with a value there, and that actually bridges the gap to that uh, $300 right, right there. But it also comes with a Founders Day patch, a Founders pin, a lenticular poster, 
and physical CDs and digital downloads of Earthworm Jim Anthology and Tommy Tallarico Greatest Hits Volume 2. And you get the whole package before the release date. So yeah, that was enough to sell me on it. And the other thing that kind of sold me on it was the fact that you could pre-order with a $100 down payment. And uh, you, that is totally refundable if you decide to change your mind. So I figured there's really nothing to lose well, except $300, really. I mean, it could turn out I hate this thing when it comes out because I've yet to uh, actually feel the uh, controllers in hand and stuff. How? Uh, uh, that's a big question. But I'm so interested in this thing, I decided I am willing to pre-order it. And also, I've been checking out the Intellivision uh, YouTube channel. I'm going to have to check out some videos that kind of explain the controllers more because I'm kind of going in here a little bit blind. But I'm... Sh like, the people supporting this thing are hyped about it and it's kind of hard not to get sucked up in the hype as well so yes i did uh pre-order this thing turns out but not only that the games i'm seeing for it like night stalker and breakout and they also put out a teaser for a new version of astro smash those games are right up my alley so like, there's three games right there i think i'd enjoy so come october will i have buyer's remorse i don't know um we have to wait till october to find out so that's it for news, let's move on to videos. Alright, so in January I actually put up two videos. On the 13th I put up Ranked Pinball FX 3 Williams Pinball from 2018 to 2019. And this was just me ranking my own personal rankings for the Williams tables that are in Pinball FX 3. And my ranking videos usually get a lot more traffic than anything else, and I haven't done that in a long time. Uh, last time I did it was for Pinball Arcade Season 7. Uh, and I also threw in the green screen. The first video I did as green screen, I didn't use this one. I'm actually, I, for that video, I actually used the green screen that I am holding in the thumbnail of this video. But <laughs> And I'll get to that when we get the pickups. But, yeah, this video just, like, blew away my expectation for views and people interested in comments and everything. So I tried to do something similar, like, oh, you know what? That did pretty good. Let me try and do something else that I think would gain, garner a lot of interest. So on the 24th, I um, posted another video. This took me a lot. This took me several days to put together. I don't know why. what was the holdup on it. But the Pimba Arcade in 2020, whether the table packs like now. So basically, I went into Pimba Arcade, and I know that they had rearranged all their table packs since they lost all the Bally Williams tables. And I just kind of went over all the tables that were left in Pimba Arcade and kind of talked about whether or not I thought they were worth the money at the time. And I also went into a little bit like, okay, Pimba Arcade hasn't done anything. I'm sorry, Farsight Studios hasn't done anything with the Pimba Arcade for oh, like a year and a half almost. And are they actually going to do anything with, else with it? Or are they just sitting on it? Um, also come to learn that a lot of some of the DLC, not a lot of it, but some of the DLC is broken on some of the platforms where you can't even access some of the D DLC. They're just not listed in the in their storefront, even though they're listed in the game. So just a bizarre thing. So those are the two videos I put up, but I thought it'd be interesting to talk about other people's videos that were posted in January. And I, like I said, I wanted to keep, limit this to five and I had five. And then somebody put out, put out a video. I was like, I have to talk about that video too. So, first off, Metal Jesus Rocks put up a video earlier this month. Yes, New Game Room Tour 2020. Now, one of the reasons I'm shouting out a Metal Jesus Rocks video is because he shout out me in the past. It, several years ago, but it was an awesome boost to my channel. So, uh, any chance I get, I'm going to shout out Metal Jesus Rocks. Because, yeah, honestly, he's an awesome guy. And this was an awesome video. He recently moved, so this is kind of a tour of his new house. Not really new house, but his new game room, which you have to watch the video. It's a misleading title because, and he kind of explains that in the video, but awesome video, giving me some ideas as well for how to set up some other things, particularly with the rope lighting. I think that's a good idea. And I kind of want to do that on a railing in the house. Also next, Friday Night Arcade. This is a channel I recently discovered and I liked it so much that I went back and watched a, like the majority of the videos this guy put out. And he put out a video recently in January, Haunted House on the Atari 2600. He put out more videos than that this month, but that's the one I'm picking out because I, I'm particularly fond of Haunted House on the 2600. And it's a great video. I recommend checking it out. 
Um, next up, we've got the Space Quest Historian with the video, I'm a rock and roll legend. Uh, pipe, Rockstar ate my hamster for the Commodore 64. Now, I've been watching Space Quest Historian for a long time because I liked his playthroughs of Space Quest. Now, he's played through all the Space Quest games. And in fact, this is the guy that was my inspiration for doing a playthrough of Leisure Suit Larry 1, 2, and 3. So those are videos I put out on this channel right before I switched to Crow Pinball. That was back when I was Crow. And then I, I switched over to Crow Pinball because uh, I was I had no idea what to do anymore. And I figured and that's what I was like, oh, focusing more on pinball would be the answer. But um, <laughs> more about Space Quest Historian. Uh, very interesting gameplay messes up a lot but uh it's like his first playthrough of the game pretty much and i thought it was pretty funny so worth mentioning here and i just wanted to spend mention uh, and shout out the space quest historian as well because i don't know when else i would all right next up we have nova bug with the friday force and number 22 an alternative retro choice uh these Friday Forzen videos were something that Nova Bug used to do. They were a community video where he'd put out a question and you would respond back with your top four of whatever the topic was. And he hadn't done it for like over a year. And now he's coming back and doing it again. This is the first one in um, a while. I think he's going to do this monthly now. Um, so I'm just going to go through and answer my question choices here which I'm pointing at my screen and I actually didn't write anything down because I'm still gonna come off come up with it with the top of my head but the question is when you were growing up you had these certain computers and consoles and if you could go back in time and swap it out with something else what would you swap it out with I mean I, I think it's like not if you could it's like you had to swap it out so even if you grew up with the Nintendo the NES and you love the Nintendo, and personally, you wouldn't really swap it out. You'd have to swap it out anyway. So my first system was the Atari 2600. If I had to swap that out with anything, I think I would swap that out with the ColecoVision. My cousin had a ColecoVision, and that was like the one thing that I, I think that I would have wanted rather than the Atari 2600, but there you go. Um, next thing. Um, See, I can't really go into computers because I had both an Atari computer and a Commodore 64 computer, and those were the two main computers at the time in the U.S. There was really nothing else to switch to, at least nothing that I could think of. Um, so let's go with the Nintendo Entertainment System, and I would swap that out with the TurboGrafx-16. I think they were about out around the same time. Obviously, the TurboGrafx-16 was a little bit later, but I would swap that out. Um, Oh, I also neglected to mention that you had to be... This, these are systems that you had as a kid, not, not anything over when you're over 20 or something like that. So uh, so next we have the Super Nintendo. I would swap that out with the Neo Geo. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it might be hard to buy games for the Neo Geo, but if I had to swap it out with anything, you know, if cost wasn't an issue, I'd swap out the Super Nintendo with the Neo Geo AES. And that's three. got to come up with a fourth one. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. I've been sitting here thinking of a third thing, and the problem is that I could pick out the Game Boy and swap that out with a Game Gear, but the problem is I had both of those. Uh, it could go... I never had a Game Boy Color, though. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> I had a Game Gear. I would swap that out with the Game Boy Color, even though I don't think they were around at the same time, but that's the best I got. Sorry. Sorry, Nova Bug. That's my, my, those are my four choices. Um, and then next video we got is from Pinball Help, and he's got a video up there called Pinball Stories Number Two: Escape from the Lost World, Escaped from a Torn Down Garage. So this is an interesting story about how he picked up this pretty rare pinball machine, uh, Escape from the Lost World, and had to rebuild it and look for all the pieces for it and everything. It's a really good story, so that's why I'm recommending it here. And then I'm, I said finally, but then I realized there's another video I have to put on this list. But next up we have Arcade USA with Microsoft Pimp Arcade 1998 PC. Uh, and this is just a really interesting video showing off uh, an over 20 year old program for Windows that um, is like the Pimp Arcade just 20 years ago, 
where it, it's a game that has seven godly tables in it. I know cue ball wizards in it, haunted houses, and, and it's just really interesting to see how a computer from over 20 years ago would, or a game from over 20 years ago would handle trying to play these games, uh, these uh, tables as realistically as possible. So it's a good old look at this kind of thing. All right, and finally, I can't believe I totally forgot about this one. Jill Poo 3. Uh, he used to do a series called Nintendo Junkie Tuesdays, but he kind of ended the series at episode 49, I think. But starting January 2020, he started it up and he put two episodes up. He's going to be doing them whenever he can instead of every week. But um, the one video I'm going to shout out is the Nintendo Junkie Tuesdays episode 51 Game Flop and Pickups. Um, it's not the return episode, um, but I think this one is a little bit funnier. He's just, uh, he just does things pretty awesomely, I think. Uh, the videos always make me laugh somehow, just some weird, surreal, goofy stuff in them sometimes. And um, <laughs> just him with the, the fake, the skit between uh, Game Flop and, um, and him and everything, I thought that was pretty funny. So just kind of like this, um, <laughs> just kind of... I don't want to say it's thrown together, but it's um, it's just like, I can't explain it. It's just, you have to watch it. So there you go. Those are my shout out videos. So let's move on to Q&A. Questions, questions, questions. I oh, need ah. answers, answers, oh, answers. Oh. All right. First up, I got a question from Donato XIE. He said, I believe you've kept a note of this before, but have you looked into Ender? If you did, have you managed to play one or more of their tables, real or otherwise? What are your thoughts about the company and their tables? And uh, <laughs> I know I responded to you in the comments, but that just because I responded to you doesn't mean it's not going to be in the video, because I know I responded to you and you were disappointed that I was going to put it in the video. Well, guess what? I can do both, can I? Now, as for Ender, Ender was a Spanish pinball manufacturer who made pinball machines between 1970 and um, 1993, from what I read online just now, and because uh, I keep forgetting all about it. <laughs> and to be totally honest, I don't know if I've ever run into any of their pinball machines. I might have and just not have thought of it. So quite, I don't really have any thoughts on the company as a whole. But just in case you're aware, there are other pinball manufacturers out there other than Williams Bally, uh, Gottlieb, Elvin Jean Company, and Stern. And um, even Zacharia, because a lot of people are unaware of Zacharia, but here's another company, Ender. So maybe Magic Pixel can do Ender Pinball next, uh, since they've run out of Zacharia tables. Yeah, just a thought. Either that or Gottlieb Magic Pixel. Next up, we got a question from Mephosopheles. What are console versions? And the only reason I put this in this video is because I thought it was funny, because I realized that when I say consoles, it could sound not like consoles, but console, like the head of a high console. Um, so <laughs> I just thought it was funny that somebody would say, what are console versions? When I yeah, Usually when I'm talking about Pinball Arcade, I'm talking about the PC and the console version. But instead of saying console versions, I'll say console version. It's just the way I talk, okay? I think most people understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Next up, I got a question from uh, Pecorina on the topic of getting around buying games here in Sweden, borrowing them from the local library, something I did recently, sorry, something I most recently did today with Battlefront 2 and DuckTales. You're allowed to borrow two games at a time, PS3, 4, Xbox 360, slash one Wii, and keep, the, and keep them for 14 days. I've been doing this with a massive amount of games since eight years back, feel good about not forking out cash on games I don't want to own but play and often come about wondering if this was possible in other countries around the globe such as the USA. I know for a fact in USA most libraries will let you rent out video games. I've personally not done it myself because I don't really go to the library but I know friends that do so I don't know what their selection is like or anything. I don't know how many you could take out at a time. I assume it's either one or two. Um, yeah, I, I know you could do this with movies as well, but I know you also could do that with video games. I don't know if all libraries do that, but it's just something I know is possible. Uh, when I was a kid, for me, it was renting games. You'd go down to the local rental video rental store and you could rent a game. Uh, 
I did this when I was in the military because there was a video rental store that would let you rent out games for one day and I would go and I would pass by there every day and literally every day I would rent a different game and try it. I've tried out hundreds of PlayStation 1 games over the course of those uh, years I was in the military. So uh, yeah, there's that. Let's move on. Next question from Dakota Mike. Hey Crow, quick question. How do you put together your custom pinball controller? Are there any good guides out there? Thanks. I don't know if there's any good guides out there. I mean, I guess you could look. I didn't look. Uh, I kind of just knew how to put the case together. I knew the encoder that I wanted to use, so I bought it and I kind of tested it out. Then I put everything together. Um, I do have a video for that, um, just kind of showing off the insides and everything. So that's the best I got. I'm not going to put together a tutorial on it, at least not anytime soon. My controller is working out just great. But, um, you know, if I wanted to upgrade certain things, maybe I think about doing it because I don't have like motion sensoring or or a, a physical plunge. And that's primarily because and that's primarily because I used a keyboard encoder. So there's no analog movement in it. Uh, I just wanted a keyboard encoder so I it would just be easy to plug in in, in and out in other uh, computers and and also being able to unit use it universally between all pinball games because usually they all have keyboard functionality without having to rearrange buttons all the time. That was the primary reason I used um, a keyboard encoder. But um, as for guides, I'm sure they've got to be out there. Just building your own arcade controller in general and just kind of modifying that for your own pinball needs. Uh, last question from Stelios Presinos. Hello, I have a question, please, about Zacharia game. What categories are also in real life tables? And, and an idea, you can make a video review for the reward tables. I unlocked four at the moment, waiting for Xbox update to add more tables and make it easier to unlock more. There are nice tables. Any drop targets there? I like drop targets. Thanks. <laughs> well, the in Zacharia pinball, there are several categories, but the categories of the real tables are the EM tables and the solid state tables. So I think they're labeled as EM and SS. Those are the real tables. The retro tables, the remake tables, the reward tables, those all are not real tables. Those are all kind of inspired by existing tables or previous games that Magic, Magic Pixel has worked on. Um, yeah, I don't want to do another Zacharia pinball video until the Xbox gets updated, the Switch possibly gets updated, and the game gets on PS4. Because I think that um, every time I put out a video on Zacharia pinball, I keep hearing messages, hey, when is this coming out on Xbox? And I know Magic Pixel's working on it. They've said January. So... Uh, maybe after sometime after I make this video, before the end of the month, they will get updated, or at least the Xbox version will, or the PS4 version will come out. I'm not 100% sure, but those updates are coming. I know they are, I just don't know when. I did want to do a video on the reward tables, and that's still in the, the, the books, but I've just kind of uh, shelved that for a while again, just waiting for the updates to happen. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's it for Q&A. Let's move on to pickups. All right, I really haven't picked up all that much this month, but the first thing I picked up was this green screen that is behind me right now. Now what happened was I had used this green screen. It's a pretty small green screen for a long time. It came with a capture unit. And several years ago, when I was still using a green screen in my videos, I bought a new green screen and I used it like once or twice and then put it away. And now that I've been using Adobe Premiere for quite some time, I was kind of curious. It's like, I wonder how easy it is to use the green screen effects in Adobe Premiere. So I started looking for that green screen I had bought so long ago and I couldn't find it, but I wanted to make this video. So I used, so the first video I did this month of the pinball effects tables ranked i actually used the older green screen the one that you see in the thumbnail of this video and i was like shoot i um i want the bigger green screen so i wound up ordering a new one in fact there were two of them because 
This one is, it was really cheap, but it had good reviews other than, hey, it's maybe a little bit too thin. So I bought two of them um, and it actually wound up being only like 15 or $20 for the two of them. And I just kind of double it up. Um, really, it's not the only thing that I've bought though, because I did buy the stand as well behind me. So that was actually pretty, a pretty cheap stand. And I actually used that for the first video, but not really using it to its full effect until just now. I'm sure I'm showing a picture somewhere of um, what the whole thing looks like from the angle, but it's it's actually, I can't get back far enough to take a picture of the whole thing. So it's a weird angle that you're seeing. And then um, the only other thing I really picked up this month were two Amiibos. I've got uh, Richter Belmont and the Dark Samus Amiibos that came out this month. I try to get all of the Smash Brothers Amiibos. I've got a huge wall of Amiibos. <laughs> so I do have the majority of the Amiibos, but there's a lot of them I passed on. I started passing on Fire Emblem ones and um, certain ones here and there. The only one I really wanted that I haven't gotten was the, Ami uh, the Isabel Smash Brothers Amiibo because apparently Nintendo didn't put those out as in quantities like the other ones. So I don't know why, like, oh, there's already an Animal Crossing Isabel Amiibo. We don't need to smash one, I guess. So I think that's why they did that, but I could never find it. And I'm not gonna pay extra money on eBay for it. So that's all the pickups. Like I said, there wasn't that much. So, and there really isn't any games. There was supposed to be I thought I would have a limited run game to show off for this, but I haven't gotten it yet, so that'll probably be in the next video. So let's just talk about the games I've played. So to start off with, not really a game, but I did take that Genesis Mini that I've had and I've modded it the, um, the first stable mod that I've seen from Mod My Classic has come out. So I went in and I kind of threw in a bunch of extra games. Um, you could add, I added 60 more games, so there's 100 games on mine now. You could, I could probably do more, but the more you add, it kind of reduces the state stability of the system. Plus, there's not as much room for save states and everything. So I picked out 60 games, added it to the Genesis Mini. So I'm pretty happy with it. If I really, really, really want more, there is a USB mod that you could use that involves adding a USB stick, but I don't think that's really necessary for me. So that was just, you know, I was playing it a little bit. So there you go. So there's that. Um, then Golf Story, I finished Golf Story earlier this month and the game, I liked it. And I don't think it was longer than it needed to be. It was getting to the point to where uh, it just was like, uh, it was just getting to the point where it's just about to drag on just a little bit too long and then the game ended. So I think it was like a perfect length for the game. Had a lot of fun. The story really didn't throw too many curveballs story-wise. There's a lot of goofiness going on in the game for sure. Like the alligators jumping out of the water to bite the balls and stuff, but um, bouncing the ball off of turtles in or whales or whatever in the water. Um, not your typical golf game, but I think it's more of an RPG than a golf game. So um, took me by a little bit of surprise in that regard that it was more RPG than golf, but I liked it and the game ended right at the right point, I feel. And so since I finished playing Go Golf Story, I started playing the first Shenmue game again. Uh, I did get Shenmue 3 from my Kickstarter, but I thought to myself, you know what? I want to replay 1 and 2 before going to 3. And I also had the Shenmue 1 and 2 collection on the PS4, which I hadn't touched. So I started playing Shenmue 1 from that collection. Uh, just to remind myself, it's been like three years since I played those games. So uh, three years ago was the first time I ever played the games. Uh, right when the Kickstarter was being announced, I think, is when I started playing them. And then um, I just want to play them again. And I, I'm just interested to see like how the series progresses. Um, I don't think that any of my stuff from the first two games will carry over into the third game, uh, but eh, I still want to. I still want to play them in order just to remind myself. And I, it's just, uh, it's just so relaxing to play this game because it's like an adventure game. It's more of an adventure game than anything else, with some QTE and some clumsy combat thrown in there. And I'm all right with that. I like just being able to sit down and be like, oh, well, I got to meet this guy tomorrow at noon. Uh, let's go to the arcade and play some video games until then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I know Shenmue's not for everybody, 
but I am enjoying it. And I think you've got to be in the right mindset to play it. So, boom, that's the video. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like and comment. Um, honestly, this is a, a, a series that's in flux, so I can change anything at any time. Next video will be the end of the month, February 29th. That's every four years, 29th, huh? <laughs> I'm just rambling, so let's end the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Um, next up, we got my hand on my face. Next up, we got Nova Bug with the Fright of... Oh, you know what? I'm realizing I'm missing somebody on this list. <laughs> All right, next up we have Nova Bug with the Friday Foursome number 22, an alternative an alt an alternative retro choice. All right, next up we got Nova Bug with the Friday Foursome number 22, an alternative alternative. <laughs> All right, next up we have Nova All right, next up we have Nova Bug with the Friday Foursome number 22, an alternative a retro talk <laughs> top for this or that or the other thing and he hadn't done those in a long time and i used to respond what the hell's going on over there hey are you back there i would always want that to be my first system but if i had to swap it out with something what the hell is going on over there and then finally, this is the one i completely forgot to put on the list so i'm gonna have to look it up later but uh jill poo three I'm gonna have to look up this video because I don't. <laughs> uh, but as for he was saying, Inder, Inder is, I believe, now I have to look it up again.